Hi everyone, Bandana here. Today we're taking a look at Inkula Naughty in its early access form. I hope everyone's well by the way and looking forward to the holidays. So in a follow-up to my earlier introduction to Inkunanati video, I wanted to do a shorter review video. Many thanks to the dev team Yaza Games and publisher Data Lake Entertainment for the key. So what is Inkunanati? In its most simple terms, it's a turn-based strategy game with details pulled from real medieval manuscripts. I feel it's a cross between a card-based game like Magic the Gathering and chess, and perhaps you could throw in a little bit of XCOM style gameplay if you wanted to relate it a bit more to a video game. And I think it's also a game that those who don't usually play video games could really get into. So is there a story? Well, not really. I guess the idea is that you are training to become the master in Kulinati, a medieval artist, shall we say, who battles on the page. I know, I know it sounds a bit weird, but it's just part of the game's charm. Let's jump straight into the gameplay since there's no sort of big overall story here. It has an extensive tutorial system which you will want to complete because it has a lot of elements. In terms of strategy, it is a very deep game. And I think overall the looks and theme of the game being a little bit silly with the animals can kind of be rather deceiving in that respect because it's a lot deeper than it looks when you start talking about a donkey that farts as an attack. The truth is the game is so deep I don't feel that I can truly get it across in a few minutes of a review video, but trust me it is deeper than it first appears. Your units, or beasts as they're called, have the ability to move around the battlefield, the idea being that you either have to kill all the enemy beasts or destroy the enemy tiny, which is the depiction of your Inculinati character on the page itself. Think of it like your king from chess. If that dies, it's game over. Damage can be direct or can be caused by objects in the field exploding or via careful planning, shoving enemy units over the edge of the battlefield or into a solid door, for example. And another paramount part of this planning is the overall positioning of your beasts. Like in chess, positioning is everything. And while some maps have just one horizontal layer to worry about, many of them have multiple layers of verticality, which changes up the positioning again, because then you have to worry about what can attack through the different levels, such as ranged units versus ones with just a sword and then pikes that can go up at least one level and then also the other types of units in play such as birds which can fly and therefore don't need a ladder to go up and down the levels and hopefully as I'm going on here you can see that I'm just adding more and more layers to the strategy of this game there are also various additional effects on the battlefield such as burning the plague and drowning with the newly added fish beasts yes I know I said fish it will all make sense, I promise. And perhaps that's a good time to talk about the beasts. Most groups of beasts fit into a standard set, such as the dogs and rabbits, which both have a sword, a pike, and an archer unit. I believe the foxes are the same. As well as some kind of heavy unit, and what I want to call some kind of caster. For the dogs, it's the aforementioned farting donkey, and for the rabbits, it's a bishop cat. But within each of these groups, the individual beasts and the special beasts have their own abilities and variations on a theme and there are other things that come into play like heresy and being holy and damage bonuses here and there and the list goes on and on like i say this game is deep and i just can't possibly explain it all here but as an example of some of the other groups, there are, for example, devils that can set tiles of the map on fire, or the new fish beasts, which can create water and cause effectively drowning damage to enemies on those tiles. And then there are interactions between those things, so water can put out the fire, etc, etc, etc. Other groups added are much more varied, such as the apes, which feel more like a group of mages to some extent, having a more varied lineup, and they are all immune to the plague, so they have more abilities to do with that. And just to add something completely weird in again, there is a snail in the game that just eats other units. And there's an entire group of units that like to explode. 
Now beyond your beasts, I'm going to add in another layer, which is your tiny, and the tiny itself has its own abilities, it has its own talents. The abilities are active, which can be healing or damage or anything in between that, and then you also have talents which may take effect at the start of every turn or just run constantly, such as they heal your unit a little bit at the start of the turn. And when your tiny is in play, another layer on top of that is that you need to collect the living ink from the map. You need to either put beasts on this or use an ability to collect it, or you need to put the tiny on it itself. Living ink, you see, is the resource you need to draw more beasts to continue your battle. In fairness, I will also quickly note that even when you don't have the tiny on the field, for some battles, collecting the living ink will heal your units once you get enough, so it can be worth doing that. While you are battling the enemy and the environment, the map will eventually try to kill you as well, as most will have an apocalypse setting at the end. These will be varied, but the main one is flames growing inward from the edge of the map. Think like PUBG or Warzone, as the map closes in and anything that's on those flames or further past them gets destroyed. Game modes wise there is the campaign which you can play through multiple times facing off against other master inculinati at the end of each act and each time you play the number of acts gets longer I believe. Initially in this mode you only have access to a few groups of units but you can unlock more via playing the game and gaining prestige points. This, I think, was to add some kind of progression to the game, but I can also understand that why some people might not be bothered about that and just want to play the different ones as they see fit, rather than have to spend time unlocking them. So, I think there's a bit of a balance to be had there, and I'm not sure it's in the right place. There is also a dual mode for single battles, where you can pick any of the groups of units at various difficulty levels, and you can play versus the AI or versus a human locally as a hot seat situation. The AI, by the way, is pretty good and has caught me out a couple of times when I've done something silly. Moving on to the sound and graphics, sound-wise the game has great music. It really does fit with the theme. The sounds are pretty solid and again, fit well with the theme, even some of the sillier ones. Graphically, the game has this wonderful art style with the animals and it's fairly amusing with their various actions and interactions and things like that. Though I do worry this theme actually puts some people off the game. Personally, I quite like it, but I know it's not to everyone's taste. Inkunanati is a fantastic game and a bit of a hidden gem. It won both Best Indie Game and Most Original Game at Gamescom 2022. My only possible negative would be the requirement of unlocking all the groups of units in the campaign mode, as I don't think that will be for everyone. For anyone that likes puzzles and strategy games, it's a great addition to your collection. With the added bonus, I am certain people who like card or board games would enjoy it too, even if they don't play video games. It's currently on sale in the Steam Winter Sale and the same over on GOG till the 4th or 5th of January or thereabouts and I think it's like at least 50% or 55% off. So if you're thinking about getting it, now is a good time. Especially as it's venturing towards the end of its early access period, I think. I don't score early access games, but I will say this one would score highly if it released in its current state. It is a lot of fun and I found myself lost in it for hours on end. I do want to make one note at the end here, which is that I know some people are put off by the theme being a little bit silly, which is truly a shame because the game is fantastic. I do think it would have a wider appeal if it had a more standard fantasy setting for the units, such as knights, wizards, dragons and ogres, etc, without some of the sillier abilities. And that is not to say that the dev team have done anything bad or wrong, I think it's fantastic, but I can see why some people are put off who prefer a slightly more serious tone to this type of thing. Which to me is just a shame because of how good the game actually is at a strategic level. Have you played Inkulinati? If so, let me know what you thought of it down below. As ever, thanks for watching. Please do like, share and subscribe and I'll see you all soon for some more reviews in the new year. Have a great holiday everyone.